Empty nest syndrome is a condition that refers to the grief and sadness that many parents feel when their children move out of the house. This condition is typically more common in women, as I understand it, who are more likely to have played the role of primary caregiver in their children's life. Although this is often a daunting and emotional process for the parents, we were able to meet up with a few parents who had found ways to make the best of the situation and cope with their empty nest blues. Take a look. Parenting in the information age is tough with too little time, more stress and a greater focus on raising a well-rounded individual. For some parents though, the biggest challenge comes when the job is done and it's time to say goodbye as the kids leave the nest. For mother of two, Vilma, it was heartbreaking. Megan is the oldest, she left home first. When she's gone there was a big gap, a lot of sadness, but Nathan was there. And then when Nathan left, then the house was really empty and I had all this time. Vilma needed something to keep herself busy. She turned to mosaicing as a way to ease her anxiety with the added benefit of releasing mood-enhancing neurotransmitters. It is very healing and it's very therapeutic. And in giving classes, I, I see that in women. I see what it does to them. How they will come and say, we can't do it, we're not autistic. But once you've taught the technique, how to cut the tiles, they actually see it's so easy, then the healing starts. And that, to me, selfishly is very rewarding because I can see what it does for other people. Inga was a stay-at-home mom who dedicated most of her time to raising ambitious children. When the time came for them to spread their wings, she was struck by an untimely tragedy. The one left in 2008 and the other one left the end of 2011. And then um, six months later, um, in 2012, uh, my husband passed away. And from one room being empty to two rooms being empty to the other side of your bed being empty, it was quite a, a lonely time. Overwhelmed with stress, Inga found Body Talk, a holistic therapy that aims to balance the body's energy levels and restore its natural healing ability. Health has always been my interest, and I've always realized that you aren't just your, your symptoms or um, your organs or your muscles or your viruses or bacteria, that there's a bigger, far bigger story behind that. But the whole mind-body connection, I thought, wow, this really makes sense. Scientists have found that emotional, mental, social and spiritual factors can all directly affect one's health, bearing fruit to the body talk ethos. As a result, Inga now dances, hikes and plays squash twice a week and hikes up to four hours a session. The body is made to move. You move it or you lose it. It has certainly allowed me to fall in, in love with life again, because life is a gift. Such a great thing to see women getting active and taking charge of their lives again. Not having your children for a prolonged time can be such a daunting challenge for some parents. We know this. Now here in studio to tell us a bit more about empty nest syndrome is Dr. Shoma. Doctor, thank you so much for Morning. joining us again. Um, well, we, we've kind of gotten a bit of an understanding of, of the dynamic of what happens, but maybe you can expand on what exactly empty nest syndrome is. You're raising a child. Most of us make children because we want them not out of accident, <laughs> so we invest, and we invest and invest. And now you've been six years, seven years, looking after this child, and all of a sudden, school starts. There's this gap in time that has to be filled. Now you've got to deliver the child to the care of the teachers, and you are left with what? A big gap in time. What are you going to do with it? All the investment, all the emotion is there. Your hopes, your aspirations, your future, your vision, it's so much, and now the child is not there for hours and hours and hours. You worry. Is the child going to cope? Is the child going to be protected? Is the child going to be raised the way I want the child raised? So it's a huge investment. Empty nest means, well, there's the nest and there's nobody in the nest. <laughs> That's what it means. I have to ask, is it gender specific or more biased towards one specific gender? I've seen fathers who've been allowed to raise children, they go through a similar kind of syndrome. They cope with it differently, but the majority, of course, it concerns the loving, caring women in our lives, the mothers. Our mothers, I love that, and our grandmothers as well, of possibly, course. certainly in South Africa's context. So what are some healthy coping mechanisms? How do we approach this phase of life? You've got to prepare. You know it's coming, so what are you going to fill the time with? If you are totally unprepared and all of a sudden there's this gap, you're going to struggle. So there's going to be loneliness, irritation, maybe even feelings of depression. If you prepare, it's very good, meaning I'm going to do something during that time. Maybe it's time to claim something back for you. You've invested in the yeah. child, maybe you should look after yourself. How about your health? Go for a walk. How about relating back to friends? Be busy. 
Don't be sitting there mulling, ruminating. That's the worst thing you can do. Um, you know, I'm glad you said, like, go for a walk. Being active, something like that is a really good idea. But how do we, how do we get this to sink in after a mother who has generally been selfless in completely giving herself over to the child? How do we teach ourselves that lesson that we now need to become that priority? Is it possible to, to get that across to a mother that she can make herself a priority? You've got to remind the mother, and it's a very good point, you've got to remind the mother of the life before the child was there. What did you do? What did you enjoy beforehand? We don't meet our partners in life and say, oh, I see you as the father of my children. <laughs> we fall in love. We are attracted to each other. And that life goes with activity, that life goes with hobbies, that life goes with the richness. You've got to reinvent the richness. The dedication to the child is wonderful. But when the child is not there for those hours, you've got to reintroduce something that lights up your life and makes it meaningful. Something that's called, what is it called? Joy. Joy, I love that. And of course, when we look at our, our older kids, where we are sometimes forcibly pushed out of the nest to go and embrace varsity or go embrace our new life as an adult, that comes with a, a redefining of the relationship between parent and child. That has got to be a very important part. Very important. We would all like to raise competent human beings. And competence means at some age you've got to stand on your own legs. But so many youngsters nowadays, it's very difficult to establish yourself because there's a hell of a big competition out yeah. there, many, many youngsters. There, it's very expensive, and now you've got to go. If you are living in Johannesburg and you sent your uh, young man or your young woman to UCT and they're well looked after, then there is the time difference. And what are you talking oh, about? Bob <laughs> suffering from a little withdrawal there as well from you. Empty after. nest? No, no, yeah, getting lots of attention. If we were that pretty all the time, there wouldn't be empty nest, would there be? <laughs> the youngster that goes needs to understand that the new role is an emergence into a virtually equal position to the parents. We will always be somebody's son, yeah. right? and somebody will always be somebody's daughter. The main part is to see that the relationship comes to a virtual equality in power, and that's very important. Very empowering for the child as well. Yes. So if I can ask you to summate one piece of advice to parents out there who might be, as we speak, suffering through this emptiness syndrome. Make sure you've got friends around you. <laughs> Call your <laughs> friends. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Call your friends and make sure that the time is spent in conversation. The best thing to do is to share. There will be other mothers, there will be other fathers feeling lonely. You can go together and talk about what you want your child to become, where they want to be, what they should be doing in the future. That shared activity makes meaningfulness and you feel less of the dread of being in an empty nest. Oh, doctor, thank you so much. That really has been hugely informative and hopefully for our viewers out there as well. Um, a, a little bit of empathy to help you through this. Think of it as a new beginning, an opportunity to rediscover and reconnect with yourself and also the child that is becoming an adult. It really is a wonderful new opportunity.